Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy Thursday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. Just waking up myself for a nice cup of coffee. In fact, how about four of those and some ground beef and eggs. Hope everyone's doing well out there in cryptocurrency land as always. Wishing you well. And let's get into the live scene right over here. Bitcoin taking the more bearishly uh, bearishly resolution of that pattern that we were looking at last night. I think most people could kind of read between the lines and get my own sort of thoughts on that. Of course, this is a great example. Sorry, let's actually do a fresh chart right here. This is a great example of, you know, when in doubt, I'm going to go with the former trend and what do we have over here we have another lower high in fact even more importantly and more um and more more appropriately uh two-day dollar chart right over here is a rejection of the 21 exponential um uh, yesterday that was so we just got a new one and continuation to the downside taking out the low of that guy that to me is likely to have more continuation uh if we do get another retest into this 10 simple right over here around 38 uh, 60 38 80 3900 i will be looking for to add on to a short i did flash a position last night i think some people caught this one and and they kind of understood what i was saying um but I was, uh, even, even on my streamer account i was short about 50 bitcoins again just uh, just my stream account but the overall count size in that is not huge so so that was a, a relatively large position for that um i've closed most of it by now but just uh just just to kind of follow up on that every once in a while you'll notice that i will flash those things and i uh, just wanted to follow up on that anyways lower time frames right over here uh just kind of essentially draw in what uh, what i'm thinking is we have something like this we had a symmetrical triangle um being put in place over the last uh, what is it like top couple weeks going all the way back now over here Vaughn catchers were right on that and we are having having resolution to the downside on this as well as the four hour dildo has officially broken this guy at 38 uh, 50 ish area um this technically will have a measure move pointing you all the way back down here towards a 3250 ish area uh, does that mean that that the measure move is 100 you know done set in stone it's definitely getting down there um i mean of course whenever you're talking about these sorts of things uh you know it's it, it's it's variable but when i but when i do see a measure move being pointed in the way of the overall direction of the trend which by the way the trend has not changed in the last over a year now well over a year a year and a month now um you know i'm gonna go with that and uh, it just increases the probability of it so this is what i mean by saying i am never really too interested in taking longs in an overall bear market i'm not really interested in taking shorts in a bull market by the same token um and just a great example right here of uh of of, of waiting for the lower time frames kind of resolve itself i mean we were looking at this uh 4, level right over here or actually a few ticks below that that area got broken um also and more importantly and i really want to give this uh some air time right now because i don't see too many people talking about this and this is very important to me uh you see the green 55 and the purple 200 exponential moving averages right over here they were hinting at a golden cross um yesterday uh however on the four hour dildo chart now keep in mind the last time bitcoin had a four hour dildo uh golden cross was really well above the six thousand range right over here um you know I, I don't see one just yet yeah see one right over here this one obviously got so you know got sold into relatively easily um over time but still you know a, a pretty damn good percentage move to the upside uh before that happens yeah about 10 percent to the upside you have the same thing right over here this was the actual phenomenal bull trap of uh, 2018 in my opinion yeah giving you about 27 percent and uh and you have you have similar examples of this you know further further backwards um typically my point is, is that typically speaking that is a very good signal for a nice move in coming now here's the thing and here's the key point when you see a major selling spree averting a very bullish cross like that I mean very bullish is a relative term right um, but when you see a selling spree averting a cross like that say where is a good where's a good example um, yeah I think we had an example right here before yeah right uh, right before the dump from 6,000 that's typically a sign because the bots in the in the algorithms are speaking they're letting you know that they are on the that they are on the sell side while they were kind of presenting the illusion of bullishness which bullishness is if I can even get my words out properly that'd be better I apologize about my my silly stutter it's probably really annoying to listen to but hey it's also embarrassing for me as well anyways um when it comes down to it you know you're looking at these sorts of things and that gives you that gives you insight into what the bigger accounts are doing the market movers as they are going to avert that at the very last second just like you see right over here everyone's looking at this as an inverted head and shoulders we've been talking about this for a very long time as it's extremely unlikely to be i think that that has not i mean people are still going to be calling it an inverted head and shoulders until you actually get below this point right over here at around 3600 i mean we've been saying this basically ever since 
it, it was never an inverted head and shoulders to begin with. The volume characters are wrong, the shape's wrong, and overall, um, and, and, and overall, you know, you don't even have the full-on neckline in place. People are going to tell you that it's right over here. No, that's not. You don't want to have it angled like that, um, especially in this part, you know, in this part of the market cycle. Um, Anyways, uh, this to me is a very clear and obvious signal, so likely to have some follow through. Um, do we find a little bit of support in our current area? Well, going over to the BitMexican chart, the chart that we've been uh, filling out for the last, uh, I mean, the the the, uh, the one that I do most of my charting on, uh, yes, we do have a little bit of a support ledge right over here at around 37.35, uh, and there will be one likely as well over here at 36.80, and then of course this swing low over here at uh, 35.69, uh, great number, but all of those are just likely to be that, just a a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a consolidation. Uh, I do believe that it's very likely that Bitcoin heads on down around here. Remember, this with this rejection, we do now have a confirmed lower high. Uh, again, just filling out just another tick of lower high on the over on you know in bitcoin's history essentially uh we're also kind of finding a little bit of support along the two three six fibonacci right over here although not not too important um but my point is is that uh you know what i'm essentially looking at is that first kind of idea that i presented um weeks back or sorry maybe not weeks back but ever since we got this guy right over here you know it became it became a strong potential reality and uh you know that i love triangles i love eggs i also like steak but i really do like triangles to trade uh, the other things you can't really trade too much and this is probably what i'd be leaning towards the most i hope that i've been pretty vocal about this as well bitcoin essentially uh has the makings of another descending triangle very similar to what it did at the six thousand level right over here over quite some time but again this brings up that secondary uh that secondary uh topic of time you know you know bitcoin can spend a lot of time going sideways along this level just like it did at the six thousand area and and uh, shaking a lot of people out getting the getting the perma bears extremely excited when you get down around here and everyone's getting short and getting the perma bulls excited on every little up move even though it's just another lower high it doesn't really take too much to do that it's kind of funny um but same thing right over here right so again uh everyone's talking about five thousand again that it's just very unlikely i don't i i never really saw the the path forwards on that as much as uh, the the uh, the most bullish thing i could see if i can get my words out properly would have been if this if this uh, symmetrical triangle got resolved to the upside over here you know with the measure move to about 45 50 share but it, even that you know it's very difficult to play up moves in an overall down market because each and every big resistance point right here at around 4150 and also right here at around 4350 and then of course you know the 45 50 45 60 ish area over here you know is going to be a potential selling is selling spur just because in a bear market bears have the prerogative to attack at any given moment in time the red dildo party can begin and they start raining and showering and then all the bulls bungholes just get skewered up and then they're fucking wrecked bb wrecked baby all right anyways um enough of that uh probably annoying to listen to but anyways uh looking at something like this um uh, is, is kind of like my main idea, but probably gonna be bounces along the way and understand that this is gonna take some time. It's not like it just fucking happens like that. Like, Nicholas Merton's here, okay? And God damn it, Bitcoin keeps on falling. Mom, I can't afford to buy any more sub. <laughs> Fuck. That kind of shit's going on right now. Um, again, the people who think that this is the bottom right here, uh, it's very unlikely to be uh this sort of price action and this sort of volume signature is very cor uh, corrective we've been saying this really ever since you had this this drive up over here and it got sold into that was your big tell not only that but if you go to your higher time frames right over here like a uh like a weekly uh well sorry let's start with the two day first i mean the the the, the two day 21 exponential getting rejected which still says that the boss and the algorithms are playing the two day dildo death cross right over here not only that but the weekly more importantly much more importantly is still respecting this 200 exponential this purple line right over here as resistance so again i hope that i'm very clear in stating that i am bearish as long as long as the market is doing three things but two of those things most importantly and hey what's up uh, good to meet you yatan good to have you in here man um but first things first i want to see an uptrend on the daily that would be a good start but the less the least important out of all the things i'm about to mention the second one is going to get the most bang for the buck probably though if bitcoin can both open and close a weekly dildo above this purple 200 exponential and remember open and close so it wouldn't have even been been possible this week it could just close above um then that would drastically change my tune that would really start to look like okay five thousands is, is is a strong is a strong potential reality if that were to happen um 
and uh and i'd probably take some long just based off that just that's how much weight i put on that the third and final area and, and the third and final and the most important thing the one that i'd have no questions asked of though although of course you'll probably have indications beforehand is if bitcoin can get back above the six thousand area over here the area that i spent about a year going sideways upon um that's your traditional you know uh, consolidation area before leading into the more aggressive dump well if you get back above that area then you know it's it's from a technical analysis perspective i have no business i have no interest in being short after that in fact i'm looking for long-term longs because i do believe in bitcoin long term I, in fact i'm i'm quite bullish on bitcoin long term but you got to call a spade a spade in the more immediate time frame so as always it's a delicate conversation of relating time to sentiment or at least my sort of sentiment of course it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor uh if the sec is listening well there you go go fuck yourself just kidding just kidding i think i'm still registered with my series 56 although i haven't updated it uh but so i'm pro so hopefully that doesn't that doesn't count for anything anyways um the 10 simple on the weekly starting to starting to edge its way closer to this 200 exponential by the way the 200 exponential also providing the impetus for the last sort of uh, rejection at the 41 30 ish area this uh this this past week so again um as long as bitcoin's opening or sorry as long as bitcoin's closing dildos below this area uh i am certainly quite bearish uh not only that though I, I think it's important to also state this as well let's let's swap the 10 simple for a 200 uh simple and uh this is the more important thing from a higher level perspective while i am overall bearish on bitcoin while i do believe that it has lower lows to go it's not appropriate to at least in my opinion to have the directional big directional trade on just like it wasn't appropriate to have the big directional trade on for six thousand until you know you broke 6,000, it's not, it's not appropriate until this 200 simple gets broken right around here, which is going to line up with a very beautiful and very nice um, uh, horizontal trend line right over here. If that does happen, then I start looking towards the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here. That's also, that's, that's encompasses this area between 2,300 and 2,600. That, that is where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014. Um, 2014, 2015 marks like right over here, a nice spike low. It would also likely have, if we go to the BLX index, our 377 ancient, uh, uh, ancient technology, yeah. Um, uh, th this blue line right over here, uh, coming in right around there, uh, which is in traditional markets a lot more applicable. But uh, I'm curious to see if it ha if it holds weight in the in the crypto lands. Uh, but I do like that it's coming around that range as well. Anyways, going back on over to this this chart, well, not only that, but we have some nice historical uh, horizontal trend lines coming around that area, and also the volume profile is having a massive node right over here, bigger than what you did at the six thousand range. Um, and of course, you know, could, is is that is that guaranteed to be the reversal? Is that guaranteed to be the low? No, of course not. And that's not the way that technical analysis works. It's just a potential area. I think that there's a lot of things aligning around that area, and there's a lot of reasons why it could certainly work out. But if that area does get, you know, it, we will only know until we see the reaction off of it, and then we can make the proper response. That's how trading with good technical analysis goes. It's a potential area. Now, if that area does break, then yeah, 1850, which I don't see too many people talking about, which makes me think that it's actually quite possible. And then if that area breaks, then yeah, then I'll, then I'll join the super bears at the 1000 area down around here. But again, one thing before the other, uh, you know, understand that when big major market bottoms are being put in, I want to see something that I, I want to see. I want to see the reaction, but also understand it's the, the signature of it is quite simple in a way because all it's going to take is i mean all it's going to take it what really happens on a major market low is that a big boy comes in someone someone with very deep pockets whether it's a massive institution or just some like russian billionaire son or or, or whoever the fuck by the way i have some to say about russia in just a second um but uh but they but they just come in and they say this is good enough for me i'm buying it all up and i don't want to see this return anywhere soon and the whole psychology behind that is they want to put in a floor where it's perhaps even not necessarily that obvious because they don't want to compete with everyone else and they want to be buying up all the blood of the actual capitulation from the people who are probably financially uh uh, financially forced to, to 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 sell you know that essentially goes for the people who you know live off of bitcoin and have you know no other external source of income and at some financial pain point will be forced to actually capitulate that is why capitulation is forced and that's what people don't really uh, have to understand about this next p point of the mark cycle this can take a long fucking time um i i have a few ideas on how long this can take i think that you know if you were to bottom out somewhere right around here uh that, that could be february but that doesn't mean that bitcoin Bitcoin turns around anytime soon. There's no real rush, in my opinion, because 
to get in at that point um, just because you know you're going to go you're going to likely go into an accumulation phase just for reference over here the accumulation phase in 2014 which by the way this current market cycle is already much longer I, I mean much longer is a relative term right but it's longer um, uh, you know you look at this area right over here this was about a year's worth of accumulation so it's likely going to be even longer in this market cycle as well so there, there's no real there, there, there's no real like rush for me to get in. Um, I understand that everyone has different perspectives. That's all. That's all well and good. Just kind of sharing mine. Anyways, onto the Russian thing before I get sidetracked again by my own self, which is just silly to begin with. But everyone's talking about how Russia announced that, or Russia is thinking about, you know, buying a shit ton of bitcoins. Well, you know what? If I, if you have really deep pockets, and if you are thinking about buying a shit ton of a shit ton of bitcoins, you know what the best thing is to do? Announce it to the world. Just let everyone know, guys. By the way, please don't buy up the prices. Because before, before we go in and buy this shit up all the way to 6,000? No, of course not. This is very silly and very naive thinking. And this is the exact sort of news that you do not want to see because it suggests that the bear market is still in full force, which, you know, as as, as, as we've kind of discussed, uh, I think is quite obvious. Um, uh, at least all the things that I'm looking for for it to continue are still, you know, intact. Um, so when the your real actually... Um, your real, a really good indication from a psychological and uh, emotional aspect is when you actually see a lot of very negative news come out. That's when the actual load typically does get put in. When positive news is coming out, it's typically perpetuated to put in the illusion of turnaround and create optimism, create that FOMO, which you've seen a lot on you know all the social media venues talking about cryptocurrencies right now. So when it comes down to it, um, you got to be looking at these areas and thinking, okay, if people are announcing this sort of thing, what is really going on? Because if you're really, if, if you really are considering getting in, you don't announce to the world, especially, uh, especially a, a, a market like this, which is, you know, quite immature. Um, and, uh, and it wouldn't take too much to really rattle this and actually, I mean, realistically it would not take too much to actually turn this guy around, um, from like an actual monetary perspective. If you wanted to shove this thing back up to 6,000 in relation to traditional markets, yes, it's still going to, you know, still going to take deep pockets, but you know, traditional markets, you need, it's, I don't think that any one person could just turn around the, the, the traditional markets right now. It would take like a group effort. Um, but in cryptocurrency land, I'm sure like, you know, someone with like a hundred billion dollars or like the richest man in the world, they might be able to, to drive this bitch a little bit anyways. Um, you know, it's, it's just kind of a testament to the lack of liquidity in this area and just the lack of, it's just so, it's so young. I mean, the market cap of cryptocurrency is under 100 billion for reference gold which which crypto gets compared to quite quite often um which you know has very little i mean there is uses for it i understand that's using like electronics and whatnot but it you know it gets gets compared to, uh, to crypto pretty often and what you know what is what is the market cap of that well well over seven trillion so seven trillion versus less than 100 billion that is a significant difference uh, to put in perspective this 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 area is very young we're still dealing with a very very immature and young technology um but I always want to repeat that. I do believe in it. Uh, anyways, let's go on over here to the longs and shorts at all. Let's go check out the, the longs. Yeah, a bunch of longs getting liquidated. So uh, losing about 3,000 of these guys, 4,000 of these guys. We spoke about this last night. I've been speaking about this for the, for the past week. Anytime that you get above this horizontal line right over here, it's not a trend line or anything like that. But it just historically speaking, anytime that you get above this area, it does actually match, match up with the biggest dumps uh, for Bitcoin. So this area over here, this area over here, this area over here, this area over here. In this area over here just too many people on the bus too many people thinking oh inverted head and shoulders bro quasimodo oh you know what quasimodo quite bullish bro you know what that means five thousand tomorrow fuck i'm wrecked you know what <laughs> i think we just need to go back and double bottom <laughs> Yeah, that's right, man. They give you two times. They give you two chances to buy the bottom because markets are so generous, you know. They're so generous, and Russia just wants you. To, Russia just wants one more chance, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you look at this area right over here, and um, you know, too many people on the bus syndrome. Now, of course, it's it's hard to time that sort of thing, right? Because you know, it can get up to thirty four thousand over here. It can get up to forty thousand. You just don't know. But uh, I think we are having resolution on this th this area getting taken out right over here. Um, it tells me that you know the cascade is likely beginning. Um, hey, what's up, uh, Al Al Alos? Alos? Is that how you say it? I hope I'm saying that right, man. Pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure to have you in here. Um, 
Uh, shorts over here, interesting, interestingly enough as well, I have the same sort of thing. I don't know what the other trend lines we're doing over there. Again, these are not these are not meant to be trend lines, but anytime shorts are 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 kind of like in this area around the low twenty thousands, or you know the lower the worse, it lines up with the biggest dumps as well. So this was your big dump of January. You probably remember that. Uh, then your big dump of February. Then your big dump of uh, early August right over here. Then your big dump of six thousand. You know in November. And when we're getting close to this area once again, it needs to be on the radar for for big shorts being put up um, as there's just plenty of dry ammo to go in dry if, if you so desire. Let's go over and check out Datamish over here. Um, oh, there, there you go. Uh, some embarrassing search history right down there as well. Anyways, uh, Datamish, very interestingly enough, I was checking this out last night and I couldn't believe it, but uh, the daily interest rate on shorts is non-existent right now. I don't know if there must be some sort of a, uh, of, of a mix up here. I'm not sure exactly why um that is why is my camera not working god damn it i just realized my camera's not working i apologize about that guys um anyways uh going over here yeah you know you look at the you look at the long rates this is not high either but you in relation to each other it's and, and keeping in, in into context like the actual overall amount uh significantly different especially when you look at the hedge shorts which is four thousand so we really have a, a, a little less than nineteen thousand uh open uh, naked shorts versus about 30, a little bit under 33,000 open longs. Um, so again, a nice imbalance. Is that going to be enough to actually crack through the, the critical 3250-ish area? I don't think it's going to break um, on the first try. I think that it breaks overall. Again, this is an opinion, not technical analysis, but uh, I, I can't stress this enough as well. You know, remember 6,000 and, and how difficult that was to break and, and how great it was as getting everyone on the wrong side of the trade during each and every drive. Well, this area over here does certainly have you know the same sort of potential in the way that i look at it now obviously we don't necessarily have this bottom trend line going on over here i mean uh, set in stone just yet i mean maybe if you make a relation back on over here you could you could make the argument for it but it's a little bit less or uh, left of center uh there will be an apex on this triangle if it does end up as a triangle uh late march although i think you'd likely have resolution beforehand just like you had a resolution on here beforehand before the actual apex of uh yeah this would have been this would have been like quite literally right now um so again, uh, looking at this area, you know, probably going to spend some time also in between, you know, the low 3000s and uh, and low 4000s. Um, and that's that's essentially what I'm prepared for right now. Overall, though, if 3250 does break, then I'll be happy to put on another big short position for a directional trade down to the next level that we just spoke about um, at the 2300 to 20, uh, uh, 2300 to 2600 area uh, for the reasons mentioned um, beforehand. Again, if you want the more long term analysis, go check out the, the go check out the playlist titled long term analysis. That is the one that will uh, go in depth on on all of those topics. So, again, check that out. And uh, I don't want to do it too much right now, just because, you know, it's. I mean, it's it's not too appropriate. Anyways, just confirming on the BitMexican chart over here, which I put the most weight on for recent price action. Uh, good volume coming up on that last hourly little break in this formation. Uh, how much? Yeah, about actually, I mean, really not that much when you actually put into in, 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 into context about 130 million. Um, on that massive red dildo, uh, but again, it does stand out above this consolidation phase over here. I was also looking at this as a rising channel. Um, the rising channel would have the same sort of measure move, um, pointing you all the way down around here as well. So again, likely to be some bounces along the way, but I do believe that uh, this 3600 area is probably going to be a bitch to get through, to be honest. Um, but I do believe that you know over the next I don't know week two, wh whatever it might be, probably does make its way back down around here. I don't really. It's it's the same thing as spy though going over to traditional marks right now you don't want to be too damn bearish until i mean you know i'm bearish on spy too I'm, I'm i'm bearish on traditional marks as well but it's not it's not appropriate to be looking for like new lows until this 239 ish area breaks over here the purple 200 exponential in fact this one's had a much better reaction than bitcoin um itself uh and have we started ha have we hit our have we hit our area yeah so putting in another spinning top dildo right over here after a nice uh you know what do you want to call this jesus christ dildo is what i like to call it but uh you know a couple 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 of uh, indecision dildos in a row. I, I am still looking for this to kind of come back down and consolidate a little bit lower. If it came back down to 251, that'd be great. Um, you know, even even 247, that'd be awesome as well. But uh, it, but also the month is quite young. I, I'm not necessarily bearish on this just yet, like looking for the trade. If, if we got up exactly into like the 260 to 261-ish area right over here, that would be the more traditional area to, to kind of enter back in around. That's also the, the, the neckline of your proverbial head and shoulders, which 
played out so fucking well, actually, funnily enough, hitting this measure move, like, almost in an instant, it felt like. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, just, it's, it's very similar to Bitcoin. P understand that there's a time and place to actually have the position. I'm not necessarily sure it's right now, although in the very short term time frames, I would be looking for a little bit of a, uh, of a pullback, uh, perhaps into the low 250s. If things got a little bit crazier again into the into 247 ish area but uh, i wouldn't i would still be looking for it probably I'd, I'd still be i'd still be careful on it just because it can very easily pop back up here in, in the 260 area would just be it would be a little bit too easy to be fair but um but you know i i would still be i'd, I'd have the same sort of overall mentality as on that as i do on bitcoin and i am still looking for lower lows uh somewhere around this area over here at around 210 to 220 ish area um, but that's going to take some time, you know, a critical, critical thing to mention. It's going to take some time. Anyways, get on over here to Mr. Buterol. Mr. Buterol was a canary in the coal mine. We spoke about it for the last uh, two days that it looked like he was putting in a nice distribution top right over here and confirmed, baby. There you go. And uh, actually simplified this chart, this chart quite a bit after yesterday's stream. Uh, basically just, you know, you got a rising channel right over here, distribution going on at the top. Then it breaks down, puts in another little kind of uh, last ditch effort right over here, even in a way ahead and shoulders kind of not really though uh, and then breaks this area and then boom down uh hitting our next hit uh smashing right through the 144 and a half area and taking you know not not collecting 200 and then going straight to uh 135 and a half so this overall i do think that it has more you know further down to come um can we make a measure move on this guy well the measure move is already hit most likely off this pattern right over here uh, that's that's already said and done. Yeah, th uh, there you go. Um, already hit, and in fact, even overshot a little bit. But again, doesn't need to be perfect. And of course, in in illiquid markets, you're gonna get that sort of price action. Uh, next area to be looking towards is somewhere right around here. There will likely be a little bit of support around this area as well. So what is that like? Uh, 126 and a half. If or if and when 135 and a half breaks, uh, you need to see like a two-hour delta closing below there. One th one. What is it? 135 and a half. Yeah. Um, that uh, then. I look for 126 and a half if that area breaks if and when that area breaks i should say i'd be looking towards 118 and a half right over here if and when that area breaks you know same thing as bitcoin probably coming back down to the 100 areas somewhere somewhere right around here and filling out this area um and uh, again, an event-driven thing. This is this is what I was talking about over the last uh, couple of weeks. You know, Mr. Buterall leading the market out. And uh, by the way, also remember the remember the trend line that we made on the volume catches right over here. Well, that was the big signal as well that this that this dump is real. Um, anyways, getting that off. Um, so 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 ugh. so when looking at this. You know, you have an event, you have an, you have, so that means that you have event psychology. Everyone's, you know, the big market movers are going to be buying in, uh, trying to create the illusion of bullishness because everyone's talking about inverted head and shoulders. God, guys, it's gone down 90%. So it can't go down even further, right? Right? Okay. It's like, no, that's not how it works. And 50% is always 50%, whether it's coming from 1,000 or 100. So, again, and also understand that, you know, if Mr. Buterall has gone down 90% here, if, if you go down like 92% from the overall high, it's, like it's still quite significant, you know, it's still quite significant. So those numbers are very easily misinterpreted and very easily, uh, and very, I mean, they're just so misleading in the way that some people present this stuff. It's, 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 it's like weaponized TA, man. Anyways, um, you know, looking at this guy right now, uh, it, you know, you're, you're getting that event psychology. You got the you got the fork coming up pretty damn soon. I know that you it's not a free cone fork, although there are two free cone forks, uh, in the next like uh, coming coming days. I think it is. Um, anyways, feel free to correct me on that. But but the overall one that everyone's kind of looking at the I think it's called a Constantinople. You know, again, it's people are just gonna buy up in anticipation of that. But this information has been has been out and viable for ages. You've probably known about it for a very long time, so you've been making decisions on it and you just like anyone else out there have about the same access to the internet so relatively about uh, about the same amount of information so you've also my point is you've already been making decisions based upon this if you were really looking forward towards this so event again event you know you rally up a couple of weeks beforehand you start the nice markup and then the bigger accounts start distributing once again because they know that now they have buyers for the less educated for the less uh, informed people um out there in the world who think that you know some sort of a scheduled upgrade a ske like literally a scheduled upgrade is going to change the world again event uh, uh, expectations can only be met or or destroyed which is it sounds a little bit uh sounds a little bit um what's it called uh 
uh, pessimistic, but it's true. Um, that's the way that our human emotional cognitive brains work. So, uh, you know, for better or worse, that's kind of what I'm, uh, that's kind of what you're getting right now. Uh, as the event approaches closer and closer, it becomes like a game of who's going to sell first. And then the cascade starts. So you saw the same thing with B cash, even though the fork was different, I completely understand that. But again, it's event psychology. That's why you see the same sort of, uh, the same sort of, um, reactions more often than not again it doesn't matter if i mean in my experience it doesn't matter if it's an announcement of an announcement a regular or just a regular announcement in the case of non-tron coins or if it's you know or, or if it's we're getting listed on exchange over here like futures or if we're getting um or, or if we're getting what's you know what, what's another one like a conference call in traditional markets or or an earnings report or forwards outlook anything like that typically you know it's it's just, it's just the impetus for for a counter move um so again, keep that in mind, and uh, and yeah, that's what I that's what essentially I have for Mr. Butero. I'd be bearish on this guy as long as you're below 144 and a half. In fact, uh, 144 and a half, a uh, very critical level right here. Um, and uh, if you do pull back into it, I'd probably be a seller at that area. That also means that if you do take it out to the upside. Um, you know, probably do get another run at your former high, but I think that that's less likely. This looks a lot like a top to me, and this is your first markdown. Um, uh, if you're familiar with Wyckoff uh, uh, distribution tops, this 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 is a pretty good example of one, I, I believe. Um, so that's what I'd be looking at over there. Light cone over here, light cone. I mean, basically just following the rest of the market, hitting you know hit, uh, hit uh, hitting this first resistance cluster right over here. This is a good good example of of a measure move uh, being a little bit higher, but at your first big resistance, you get rejected because while well, you're going counter trend, um, as and, and again same th same thing for Litecoin. As long as you're below like 36 bucks, uh, bearish on this guy. And it's probably just going to follow the market as we, again, we haven't seen bifurcation in the market, anything like that. XRP, again, can't, can't stress this one enough. XRP, three-day diddle chart right over here. Very, very clear and concise. Three-day diddle death cross right over here. Green 55 to the downside of the purple 200. As long as you're respecting that 21 exponential over here, I am bearish on this guy. And I'm looking for it to come back over time. Not today, not, not even tomorrow, but over time, somewhere down around here, around uh, your prior lows at 28 cents. Now, that is a critical area to hold. If you do lose 28 cents, then there's something to talk about as there's just not much holding you up from this kind of like lower support ledge down around here, around, you know, the high, the, the mid to high teens uh, area. Um, so, so again, kind of a, you know, going to be a critical area coming up for, for Mr. Uh, Ripples or Mr. Nipples, whatever the fuck you call it. Um, but, uh, you know, as long, again, as long as you're expecting this, this 21 as resistance, not good. Um, same thing with Stellar's over here. Everyone's getting super bullish on Stellar. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Again, I think that Stellar is probably, you know, it has one of the better charts, just like Ripple overall in comparison to the riffraff of this space, probably two of the coins that are likely to survive over time. But, 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 but. As long as you're living below this area right over here, that is a break of market structure. And uh, I mean, this one not even getting a second chance to retest the 21 exponential. By the way, we will be getting a, oh man. So we just got a new tick on the three-day little chart over here. You can see the purple the purple 200 and the green 55 getting ever so close. That will be a death cross on the three-day little chart. That's very, very powerful. And that'll likely be the impetus for, for, for breaking this area over here. And at some point in time, sending this thing back to like the high single digits, I'd imagine. Um, Again, I'm, you know, there is something you said about about these cones that overall have better charts than most other things, but you know, <laughs> down market is a down market, man. The trend has not changed in the in the last in the last over a year. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so what else do we have to look at? So we looked at that. Do we want to look at the MBT signal? MBT signal, by the way, I believe it actually has been updated now by its creator, so it is still relevant. Um, uh, uh, Rocky and myself were talking about that uh, over the weekend, and there was a period in time where it was not relevant because it had not been updated to include uh, the changes to liquid and lightning right over here, but it looks like it has been, it looks like it has been updated, at least that's what I'm told uh, by the creator, um, uh, Wu. Uh, jo I think his name is Jonathan Wu. And uh, you can see over here, still around this 100 level right over here, very slim, similar to how you were during the kind of the bull trap area of 2014. I mean, the secondary bull trap area. And sorry, it's probably best represented right over here. And again, and again th this is essentially what I'm thinking for Bitcoin um, in the in the current time frame. So I believe that this area right over here is very similar to what you're doing right over here. Uh, look at the, I mean, look at the volume characteristics in, in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Look at the volume characteristics in, in, in relation to this guy right over here very very similar bitcoin coming off of basically what was a 52 and a half percent drop right over there you know if you take it from the six thousand area right over here and you make the same sort of thing you know another 50 53 percent drop right over there you know again these sorts of things um doesn't need to be exact but it is interesting how they do line up pretty damn well so going on this guy right over there 
you know, very, very similar. If you look at the MVT signal, you can, th this is, this is essentially where we're talking about right over here. You know, you top out well above this area, then you come back down around this dotted trend line where, uh, where, where, where my Chris currently is. Well, look, look right over here. Very similar. Um, I do believe that, uh, you know, each and every time in Bitcoin's market cycle history, it does bottom out where my curse currently is now, or a little bit lower. And you can see right now that uh, we are well above that area. So again, don't believe that the low is in. And uh, if you want the full on look on that, again, check out the long term analysis playlist as that's that's going to that's going to explain it. Hey, what's up, Christian uh, Benitez? Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, so, yeah, that's that's essentially my thoughts on that. Let's go back to Mr. Bitcoins over here, see what he's doing on the uh, lower time frame. Let's see if we can get any more clues from our oscillators. Although, again, price action first here. And that's the fir you know first and foremost uh, important thing. Um, you got uh, you got two hour Stokes just crossing down. You got uh, two hour DMI giving you. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily so fresh anymore, but giving you a nice, uh, nice, strong sell signal uh, to kind of kick this guy off uh, Two two hour jewel, getting it perfectly all the way down. Holy shit. This indicator is def is by far the best indicator that I know. You can see that this area just like this 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 gave you the fucking trade right there. My God, man, I wasn't awake for this, um, but I already did kind of have, have a position. The the one that I showed last night, uh, short about I think it was like forty five bitcoins. Um, or whatever it was, just go back on the stream and, and you can see. Uh, I flashed it for a second, although it didn't necessarily want to reveal my, uh, reveal some things about that. Anyways, um, four hour over here, not telling you too much. Um, four hour RSI getting into the deep bearish control zone. Uh, four hour Stokes still going down. Eight hour Stokes, fresh cross, or not fresh cross down, but still headed down, you can see. Or actually, you can't see, but let me just bring it up. So eight hours still headed down 10 hour over here. Um, again, that was kind of the impetus yesterday that we were looking at and uh, 12 hours, same sort of thing. What about the daily though? I'm curious what the daily's doing. Yeah. Daily's losing momentum. So likely to cross down as well. Pretty damn soon. Um, daily DMI, not telling us too much about price action over here. Uh, still kind of neutral ish. Um, but uh, yeah, not too much else to report on that. I, I think the biggest thing right here to be aware of is what we were looking at yesterday. So not only is a two day uh, Stokes uh, hinting at hinting at loss momentum and also a cross or, or a loss of momentum, no doubt about that, but also a cross to the downside. Um, but also the two day uh, hidden bearish divergence now finally playing out. And uh, typically speaking, when you do get hidden, hidden bearish divergence on this guy, it will align. Whoops. Uh, hey, what's up? Uh, Star, Starfire Mac. Good to meet you, man. Um, it will it will typically include a test back into the lower bearish control zone right over here. So again, um, you know, that's that's really all it is. Uh, are we are we in the initial etchings of making the, the dreaded M formation over here? The M is for murder. Could be, but still has to come all the way back down to 3,600. So again, um, just just a few forwards outlooks on things. I'll be back on tomorrow night, or sorry, tonight, tonight itself. Hey, what's up, Dragon? 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 Bacos. Good to meet you, man. You must be Greek. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. Anyways, uh, I'll I'll leave it off here now. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything. But uh, again, big big news with this area being being or this cross being averted right right over there. That is that is very very powerful to me. Um, so overall, guys, that's going to do it for this morning's stream or this morning's video. As long as we are essentially below 3,900, I am looking for a move pretty much down to 3,300 overall. Although again, bounces along the way uh, are you know still got to chew through 3,700 then then 3,600. Uh, very important down around here. But uh, overall, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Those are my thoughts. I'll be back on later tonight with some more live stream action. Hopefully, we can, get, we can catch some more price action. And uh, again, the news is lower highs, baby. Lower highs. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. That's it for me today. Or that's it for me this morning. I hope everyone's had a beautiful rest of your morning. And I'll be back on later. Look forward to seeing you guys there. And I wish you well.